Hi, I'm Sarah at Stock Charts. So here's a question for you. How do you make money using charts? In today's video, I'm going to tell you how experienced traders use one of the most popular technical indicators to help them decide when to buy and maybe more importantly, when to sell. It's easy to use and it can tell you at just a glance whether a stock is likely to continue its current move or reverse direction. Information that's invaluable for people looking to buy or sell. While it's very popular, not everyone knows how to use it correctly. And whether you're just starting your stock market journey or you're a seasoned pro, you need to understand, watch, and respect this indicator signals. Of course, I'm talking about none other than the mighty MACD. When you're trading stocks, you've got three key decisions to make. What to buy, when to buy it, and when to sell it. Technical traders study mo price movements to help answer those questions. Used correctly, price charts can help you answer those questions too. Some of the most important things traders look for are price uptrends, periods of time when a stock is constantly moving up. Uptrends happen when more and more people become bullish on that stock. Technical traders try to find uptrends early so they can buy low, and then once that trend is over, sell high. While the concept of an uptrend is simple, finding strong uptrends early enough to profit is difficult. Let's face it, if it was simple, wouldn't everyone be doing it? One of the big problems with finding uptrends is noise. Stock prices tend to be noisy, meaning they often have up and down movements that aren't part of any trend. Yesterday, a stock was up a dollar, and today it could be down 50 cents and tomorrow it'll be up a nickel. These movements aren't meaningful to most traders. They're just noise. However, sometimes something bigger can be hidden within that noise, an uptrend that we might be able to profit from. But how do we spot it? How do we separate meaningful price movements from noise? That is where technical indicators like the MACD come in. A technical indicator is a mathematical function that takes a stock's price, sometimes its volume as well, and generates a line, or sometimes several lines, that gives a stronger insight into what's happening with that stock. Let's look at a simple example. Here's a chart of a stock whose price is jumping all over the place. So the question is, on average, is the stock increasing or decreasing in value? Just from looking at the chart, it's hard to tell, right? We'll need an indicator to help us out. Now here's the same chart, but with a 20 period simple moving average indicator added to it. Notice how the indicator is moving upwards. A moving average tends to filter out the noise and shows you the bigger picture. They're a great example of how technical indicators can help. While simple moving averages are great for filtering noise, they also have a big weakness, lag. So what is lag? Well, here's an example. Let's look at this chart. As a trader, you can use the 20-day moving average to determine when to buy and when to sell. When you would buy whenever the stock price moved above the 20-period average, and you would sell whenever it moved below that. Pretty easy, right? Again, why doesn't everyone just do this? Well, it turns out that this simple strategy only works well when the stock is already in a strong uptrend. And even then, if you use this approach, you'll end up leaving a lot of potential profit on the table. Worse yet, if the stock stops trending and starts moving sideways, you'll lose money, and possibly a lot of it. The problem with moving averages in an uptrend is called lag. Lag happens when it takes a 20-day moving average, roughly 20 days, to change direction after the stock does. That's a long time. As you can see on this chart, it means that you'll lose out on the start of any uptrend, or even worse, you'll give back a lot of your hard-earned profits before you ever sell. So lag is a killer. Okay. So you might be saying, why not just use a shorter period setting, like a 10-day or 5-day moving average? Let's see what'll happen. Unfortunately, when we do this, we now have the problem of whipsaws. A whipsaw is a faulty signal. When you get a buy signal one day and then get a sell signal the next day, you've been whipsawed. Faced with the problem of lag and whipsaws, technical analysts started looking for a better way, an indicator that gave consistent signals regardless of the stock's direction. Eventually, they found the MACD. However, before we talk about that, I have one more thing to tell you about, momentum. Momentum is the idea that a stock will continue moving its current direction for some time to come. 
It's a very comforting idea for traders, as it suggests a stock can't just reverse directions randomly whenever it feels like it. Unfortunately, momentum is an illusion. Stocks can and often do reverse direction for a whole variety of reasons. It could be news events, rumors, competitor actions, you name it. As much as we'd like the market to be predictable, in reality, it's anything but. That said, some stocks are less volatile than others, and for those stocks, the concept of momentum can be very helpful. When those stocks enter an uptrend, they tend to be slow, steady, and cautiously predictable. Those are the kind of stocks that technicians love and that the MACD was made for. The MACD is an acronym that stands for Moving Average Convergence Divergence, which is just a fancy way of saying it's an indicator calculated by subtracting two different moving averages. The MACD was invented in the late 70s by Gerald Appel. As he put it, I was looking for a quality indicator that would be readily interpretable, that would not create so many whipsaws as to be confusing, and that would still be relatively simple to maintain. As you can see on this chart, the MACD consists of three elements, the MACD line, the signal line, and the MACD histogram. Let's go over each of those one at a time. The MACD line is a thick black line that goes above and below the chart's zero line. Indicators that go up and down like this are often called oscillators. What the MACD line is, is actually just the difference between two moving averages, typically the 26 period average and the 12 period average. On this chart, you can see two averages on top of the price bars, one in green and the other in blue. Check out the gap between those two moving averages. See how the size of that gap corresponds to the location of the MACD line lower down? When the green line is above the blue line, the MACD line is above zero. But when the blue line is above the red line, the MACD line is below zero. Also notice that when the MACD line crosses zero, the green and red lines also cross. When the MACD line is going up, you can see that the stock's price is going up, usually anyway. And when the prices are going down, the MACD line normally follows suit. You might also notice that the MACD line isn't as noisy as the stock itself. Its movements appear to be more deliberate, which is a really nice quality for an indicator to have. Another key part of the MACD is the red signal line that sits on top of it. The signal line is simply a nine period moving average of the MACD line itself. The signal line is used to identify the MACD buy and sell signals. When the MACD line moves above the signal line, it's a bullish buy signal. When it moves below the signal line, it's time to sell. Now, again, while the MACD often gives us very useful signals, you shouldn't blindly follow the simple approach. MACD signals are typically used in conjunction with other signals to create real world trading systems. For now, just know that the MACD buy and sell signals can be used to identify possible new uptrends or the end of existing ones. The blue bars make up what's called the MACD histogram. Just like the MACD lines is the distance between two other lines, the MACD histogram is the difference between the black line and the red line. In other words, it's the difference between the MACD line and the red signal line. Let's look at this chart again. Do you see how when the MACD line is far away from the signal, the histogram bars are taller? And when the signal line crosses the MACD line, the histogram crosses zero. In a way, the histogram is sort of like a MACD of the MACD, but not exactly, but very close. But why would Gerald Appel add such a thing to his indicator? What does the MACD histogram show us? The answer to that is that it shows us the change in the stock's momentum. Assuming that there are no sudden jolts to the stock's price, the histogram allows us to see the strength of the current trend and whether the trend is getting stronger or weaker. On this chart, when the stock started to take off, the MACD line jumped and so did the histogram. It was the start of a really strong trend. But later, the first thing to weaken was the histogram. See how when it started moving lower, everything else was still going up? It showed a loss of momentum for the uptrend. Unless something changed, it meant that the uptrend would end soon. And as we can see, that's exactly what happened. In this way, the MACD histogram can be our canary in a coal mine when it comes to uptrends. As long as it's still rising, all is well in the world. But as soon as it starts to fall, we need to be on our toes and ready to hit that sell button. To wrap things up, today we've seen how the MACD can help you spot new trends while they're still developing, monitor the strength of a trend over time, and determine when a trend is probably over. But remember, making money in the stock market is never easy. The MACD is just one tool to help you understand what a stock is doing.
to profit consistently, you'll need a repeatable objective trading plan along with some great charts and data just like what we provide at StockCharts.com. Finally, many people ask us, of all the hundreds of indicators you have at StockCharts, which one should I focus on first? Well, for my money, you can't go wrong with a mighty MACD. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe and ring that bell. I'm Sarah at StockCharts. See you in the next one. Thank you.